I like to start out with giving you a rule. And this is a rule that if you follow this, I can just assure you, if you follow this one rule, you can systematically ruin every relationship in your life if you follow this rule. All right? You ready for the rule? <clears throat> now, I hope you don't follow this because if you do, it will ruin all your relationships or at least take them downward. You ready for the rule? Play fair. Play fair. That's the rule. All you have to do to make every relationship that you have get worse is to play fair. Now, what do we mean by that? Well, what is fair? Fair is equal, right? In some of the ways we think about it. Fair. Fair is <clears throat> you treat me nice, I'll treat you nice. That's fair. Right? You do something good for me, I'll do something good for you. That's fair. It's equal that moment. Also fair is, but you do something <clears throat> snitty or mean to me, then remember what the law of Moses said? An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. That's justice, ultimately, right? Fair, justice. You scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. You hurt me, I'll hurt you back. That's what every human is born with this in our heads. We're generally nice people that are nice to us, but you go on a playground, even with the young kids. One of them pushes them, what's the other? They push them back. It's instant. It's in our DNA. It's what it means to be human. Somebody cuts you off on the road, you honk the horn back. Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. It's fair. Now, why will that ruin all of our relationships? Well, what does it require? It requires perfection. I remember one time I was doing a business deal. And we had gone through a long process and all the negotiations and, and getting all this done and everything looked good. We got down right to the end. <clears throat> and I'll never forget. I don't know why this sticks out of my head, but I'll never forget this guy saying this. He said, this is going to be great. He said, I'm going to really enjoy enjoy doing this deal with you. And he said, I'll tell you what, we're going we're gonna to do some good things. And he says, you know what? You treat me well, I'll treat you well. And he says, but don't slight me. I'll get you back. He said, but you treat me well, we won't have any problems. I pulled out of the deal. You know why? Because if I make a mistake or I don't perform in some way, I want a partner that's not going to punish me and stab me or something. I want a partner that's going to reach across, reach across the room and say, hey, what's going on? Can I help? Let me help you. You slipped a little bit. How can I help you back up to my level? And when I'm in a relationship, if somebody's struggling, whatever, what do we want to do? We don't want to get them back. We want to reach over and try to pull them back up. One of my favorite verses in the Bible, you know, my, my team. Thank you. Can I just cheer my beauty? Will you come say hi to our, please? She won't do it. Anyway. My incredible wife, I texted her, see, it worked. I got some water. But my team always laughs at me because they say I say a lot. One of my favorite proverbs is, or my favorite proverb, or one of my favorite verses is, and I think they're actually cutting together this, this montage of how many times I say that. But anyway, one of my favorite verses is, it says this. It says, don't be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Okay, so think about this. Husband and a wife. Somebody walks in the door from work. The other one's already there. And the, and the one that's already there says, oh, so you finally decided to come home, huh? Or, you know, so where have you been? Or I thought you were going to be here. And, and it's not that to say something about this, but there's a little bit of a dig in there, right? And you feel that dig. There's a little sarcasm. And then what does the other one do? 
well, what have you been doing all day? You get them back, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. A lot of times somebody says something sarcastic or something harsh or whatever. Well, you think you're perfect? You come back at them. Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. Push the kid, push you back. Push the spouse and push you back. It's fair. They deserve it. I've heard a couple say, so why do you talk to him? Because he deserves it. Really? Is that what you want in life? You want what you deserve? I don't want what I deserve. <laughs> I want grace and mercy. I want better than I deserve. Please, everybody in my life, if my family didn't treat me better than I deserve, I would be in trouble. So think about this. What if in every relationship, what if when that first person is off their game and they do something dysfunctional, right? <clears throat> what if instead of returning evil for evil and playing fair, what if we rose above that when they came in and said, so I thought you were going to be here or where you been? Or, you know, what if, what if we said, Oh, I'm sorry. It's, it, are, are you hurting in some way? Am I, you know, did it hurt you that I'm, I'm late? Did it gave some sort of empathy, gave a soft response? See, they dropped down in their maturity there for a moment when they said that sarcastic remark. But if we don't react and go down to their level, which is now taken the relationship down, if somebody says something hurtful and we give something redemptive, healing, soft, caring back, what can we do? We can pull them back up. See, what happens in dysfunctional families <clears throat> is there's nothing wrong with dysfunction in the sense that <laughs> what other planet do we have to live on, right? We're with imperfect people. But in every relationship, somebody's going to do something not perfect. And if we don't do something dysfunctional back to the dysfunction, then we're not going to be dysfunctional. We're just going to have problems that we resolve. So when somebody is failing in some way, let's not get them back. Let's bring them up. Let's bring them up. Somebody does something controlling. Let's say, you know what? That, that doesn't really feel good. Let's figure out a different way to do that. Instead of, you're so controlling. You know, one of the four predictors of divorce that the Gottman researchers always point to is this contempt and the judgmentalism. If a couple has that, you know, pretty good chance they're not going to make it. So let's not judge each other. Let's heal each other. <laughs> my team's going to laugh at me. Another one of my favorite verses. <laughs> Jesus said, I, I didn't come to judge the world. I came to, to seek and to save, to heal the stuff that's broken. What if we did that in every relationship? What if in a business relationship, let's say you got a client, we've agreed to, you're going to pay me this amount and you know I'm going to perform these services. And then you don't get the check. What if instead of a collection notice, what if you called them and said, hey, what, you know what's going on? We didn't get a check. You guys okay over there? Yeah, well, we've really had some struggles. Well, can we, can we, can we lend you a couple of people this week? Try to get out from under the pile. Can we? What can we do? How can we help? What if we did that in the way that we practice our businesses? What if we actually lend a hand to people that actually owe us? Realize how much different things would be in this world if we just didn't play fair because if we don't do that there is a place we can go where everything is fair and that's to court and court always costs you always always always